In this video, we're going to add a data table to our existing results screen. Now, when we look at the data table, we see we have a P data table tag, varcar, which is the variable that we're going to use for each of our rows. And then we have value, and we see this is bound to a managed bean of some type, dtbasicview.cars. In our example, DT Basic View is going to be our search plants. And then the list that we're going to bind to is the one called plants. So let's see how it looks. Uh, the reason why we're going to bind to this plants list is that is where we are storing the plants that come back as our search. Those come back as part of our search. So I'm going to go down and we know that if, the, if we get results, we're going to go to the search navigation. Search navigation through faces config is going to take us to results xhtml. I go to results xhtml and this is where I want to add my data table. So I'm going to maximize this so we can look at it in high def. Now remember what the name of our uh, tag was? It was pdata table var equals car value equals and then we have some kind of funny syntax there. So uh, let me just start by saying p colon data table and I'll also confirm when I look up above that I have imported the prime faces library and I've given it the alias p which I have done so p data table uh, will say var equals plant so a singular plant from the collection value equals double quote pound open curly close curly close double quote and before I forget, I'm going to go ahead and finish off the data table tag. Now I will go ahead and enter my value, uh, my, my bound list, which is going to be search plants dot plants. Okay, and save. So we're iterating over the plants collection from the search plants managed bean. Uh, so search plants dot plants, remember that. If I go to search plants, you'll see that uh, the class called search plants has a getter method called get plants. And that's what's going to be called uh, here, search plants .get plants. So now I'll add a column uh, back to back to the results XHTML. I'm going to add a column and we'll say P, whoops, lowercase p, colon, column. Okay and uh, put a little space between those two the column we're going to give an id so we'll say uh, header text actually we'll give it a header sorry header text equals genus okay and now within the column we're going to say h colon output text and this is what's actually going to show in that cell in that uh, column and row combination uh, for the output text we'll say value equals now remember that plant is our iteration variable so we're iterating over this collection here and for each row we're pulling one item out of the collection and putting it into this variable called plant so what we want to show here is value equals and then double quote then using our jsf syntax pound open curly and then car uh sorry uh plant dot genus we don't have to worry about putting get genus. It will figure that out for us. So just plant.genus, and then we will terminate this column. Okay, let's go ahead and do this for uh, cultivar and common name as well, or at least species and common name. We'll add a few columns here like so. Do a little uh, justification. Okay, so let's say genus, and then we'll say species. Okay, and species. And we'll go, we'll skip cultivar for now. We'll say common and common and save. Okay. Now I did realize a little uh, naming collision that I had here, and that is I'm already using a variable named plant in my user interface. I have this variable plant. That's the one that we were using to collect the search information from the user. And I was trying to reuse that variable name in my results screen as this iteration variable. 
Uh, that won't work. We're going to need to make a new variable name here so that we don't have a collision between the two. So I have renamed this to plant result. Again, that's our iteration variable, meaning every time we paint a new row, it's going to iterate over this collection. It's going to take one plant and store it into a variable with this name. And then we can access each of the individual attributes of that plant using this standard JSF syntax of pound, curly, then the variable name, and then the attribute name. So I made that fix. I come back to my page and take a look. Circus canadensis redbud, Quercus rubrum, uh, Pleasant Ridge red oak. Sure enough, everything's looking good. Everything's working. Just to make sure, I'll try to make it go a little bit quicker. I'm going to turn off breakpoints, and let's try it from the top, uh, maybe with a different term this time. So take out index HTML. Okay, this time let me put in oak. And we're going to say submit and take a look. With this time, we get very quick results as well. Quercus rubrum, Pleasant Ridge, red oak. Quercus alba, white oak. So you see this time it gave me my two oaks. Uh, I can go back and put in Paul, like in Paul Paul. Hopefully I have that one wired up correctly. And sure enough, we get Asemina triloba, Potomac Paul Paul. Now, we need to make this page look a little bit better. I don't doubt that. We need to apply the proper template and give it a little bit better coloring. Uh, but you will see that the table is coloring up as green. Now, remember how we did that. If you remember, we set a theme across our entire... Let me go back to J Java EE perspective here. We set a theme across our entire application uh, using faces. Um, if we take a look at the web.xml, you'll see there's a context param prime faces theme, and this one is lay frog. Uh, so that's why it's coming up as green. Uh, if you want to try a different th theme, of course, you can go here to the PF themes. You see after dark, black tie, so on and so forth. The one we chose was lay frog. And if you take a look, whoops. If you take a look, uh, there was a split second there where it came up. Uh, but you could see that when we applied the lay frog, that uh, our table came as green. If you don't like that green, you want to use something like midnight or mint chocolate, all you have to do is go into this uh, web XML and change the theme that you're using here. So in this video, we saw how we can select a, a, a group of rows from the database using a like query, and then we can show those rows in a prime faces table. Very quick and easy to put together. In our next video, we'll take a look at more things that we can do with the Prime Faces widgets, like uh, making an editable page. I look forward to seeing you then.